All right, so in this video, we'll learn more about Cedric's day-to-day -day role in his current uh, business that he runs as a meditation coach. So Cedric, what does your day-to-day -day look like? Um, uh, okay, so I'd say probably have like somewhere between 10 and 15 one-on-one -on -one clients a week. Um, and so that, so that varies. And so again, it's like look somewhere between two, one and four a day um and they're, you know they're hour-long sessions and then most days i talk to my uh business partner um you know just kind of about like growing the business mainly about like putting on so i spend a lot of time talking with him about putting on um you know programs because i like i teach like eight week classes i teach like half day um uh, meditation workshops and then like full day meditation retreats. So we're talking a lot about that. Also a lot of, you know, I mean, product development, which is just like effectively perseverating about my hobby horse, you know, <laughs> just like, <laughs> she was like, Oh, like, Oh, I, I've been thinking about this thing and this is so cool and, and blah, blah, blah. So then he and I will discuss that. And then, you know, I also, uh, you know, it's kind of, I mean, I think I'm like lucky because like my, per like, there's like a, like a, like almost one for one relationship between my personal and professional interests. They're like almost exactly the same thing. So it's like, you know, all I just do is like, you know, I just like follow my interests basically. And then, and then it's also kind of, I mean, this is maybe a bit tangential to what you're asking about. So, so kind of, cur you know, cur curtail me back in if it's need be, but like, you know, it's just like, and also like, you know, understanding the business dynamics is like, is also like, it's like a legit interest. I was always, obsessed with demographics like what's the demographic that's going to be into this so you know I, I find myself like discussing that with my business partner and um so yeah. those are a few things what well, else so I, hear, I hear a couple of clusters i hear one-on-one -on -one coaching uh -huh. workshops and retreats sort of conversations with your business yeah. partner maybe about the day-to-day -day and the sort of ideating for the uh-huh i'm curious how much of your time do you spend sort of heads up talking to someone like this versus heads down like chugging on new ideas etc is that right, 50 right. 80 20 geez oh that's a good question it seems like a lot of the time is in one-on-one -on -one, like i guess it, you're calling it heads up yeah. um yeah um yeah uh, and then and then you know uh, and then another thing that i'll do is that like you know, it's interesting. So like, I have like meditation partners where we'll meet online and just like meditate just as friends together. But then a lot of times I'll like, like, like lead a meditation. And then that'll be, you know, it's effectively like product development. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's kind of like, it's like kind of like, it, it's, it, I mean, it's interfacing, but it's like also kind of heads down, like, like trying to figure out like, well, what's this? Like, how do I want to teach this and etc. And then even like the one on ones are like, I'll say, this, you know, I tend to be very exploratory with it all like i turn that's like oh well you know this could work and maybe so i try to like constantly be uh you know fresh and like uh, yeah just exploratory even in the one-on-ones so yeah. in a sense i think it's kind of combined for me but yeah let me turn it oh, it's true and it's an interesting point i think if heads up and heads down but if you're meditating in a collective session yeah, that's sort right, of all right right <laughs> right if we're not meditating then i'm talking about meditation which is informing kind of like the heads down part of it you know well, it's amazing to have a product that you're so passionate about. Yeah, I know you also work in the space of attachment repair. Can you right. talk a little bit about what that? Sure, is? sure. Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of background coming in. So, um, for the last, for the last, let's say, fifteen years, you know, my interest has been meditation. It's largely been kind of what I would call like wisdom type meditation, or like the, with like almost like a little bit of a transcendental type um, focus, mostly Buddhist, right? Um, and so, okay, so that was that. And then a year ago, a meditation friend of mine by the name of Evan Lead, um, who also does the same work that I do, um, he mentioned to me, or he started, started talking, to me, talking to me about attachment theory, which I was very vaguely familiar with from my psychological studies, and then particularly attachment repair, and then the particular form of attachment re repair being the ideal parent figure protocol. And so I got, he started talking to me more about that. And I got like completely interested and obsessive about it because I also realized that I had 
what I now would call, term attachment disturbance. And so like, that sounds like, I think very jargony. So let me like back up and kind of like put that in plain English for people. So briefly attachment, um, attachment, like attachment theory describes this kind of, this early dyadic relationship between the caregiver, usually the mother and the infant. And then this kind of period of attachment is between six and 20 months of age. So it's really, really early and the brain is forming, et cetera. And then to kind of keep it brief, it's like in the attachment phase of development, and we're really talking about developmental psychology, uh, these questions are answered for you. It's like, is the world safe? Are others comforting? Um, can I just be myself and expect my needs to be met? Or do I need to modify myself uh, in order to get my needs, needs met? Um, do others delight in me or am I a burden? Is physical affection something um, welcomed or not? And then, um, so anyway, so, and then one more note on that is that like your attachment conditioning um, it, um, sets the foundation for three very important lines of development. Emotional regulation, like can you just stay emotionally regulated or do you, for example, need alcohol, Netflix, marijuana to stay emotionally regulated, right? Um, also relationship, like what are relationships like for you? Are you able to, like, are they fulfilling? Do they work for you? And then the other piece is exploration. Are you good at exploring what is meaningful to you? So that's like, in a sense, the questions that uh, attachment conditioning, uh, or, or that's what happens with, that's what is figured out in, in your attachment conditioning. But then about somewhere between 30 and 50% of the US population has insecure attachment. And so that's this, this deep, and what's really interesting also is that this is at the procedural level of the mind. So all, this conditioning all takes place before there's actually a full on narrative mind. Hmm. And so it's like, it's like behavioral level of the mind um, that's before concept, before narration. Anyway, with that said, so maybe 30 to 50% of the US population has insecure attachment. And for those people, they really benefit from like going back and then doing this early repair work and then to keep that, like give a brief explanation of that. So the form of um, attachment repair that I uh, teach or instruct or guide, something called the ideal parent figure protocol. And I'll give you like a one minute version of what that is. So it's, it's really an interesting practice. It was developed mostly by um, Daniel P. Brown out of Harvard, who's both a psychologist and a meditation master. And it's kind of a combination, it, it, taking, it's, informed by attachment theory, but then drawing on hypnosis and also um, deity yoga from, <laughs> from Tibetan Buddhism, where they kind of like imagine these deities and then they, they're meditating on these deities. And so what you do is you imagine ideal parents and then they have, you have them meet all your needs. You have them give you safety, protection, attunement, understanding, um, physical comfort and affection. Um, uh, 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 um, hold on, what's the other one? Uh, uh, delight, they delight in you and they also support your explorations. And then through these meditations, you actually heal this early uh, attachment condition. And so that's what, um, that's like my principal work now is putting on programs to guide people to improve their attachment conditioning. And yeah, anyway, so, and, and I think I've been prattling so long, I've now forgotten context. Well, Where are we at? <laughs> Orient me here, Tori. It sounds fascinating in terms of just engaging with folks on this fundamental yeah. level and really yeah. having that context of 30 to 50% of folks yeah. meeting. I'm yeah. curious, uh, with something that you're so passionate about and mm. so immersed in, yeah. how often do you find yourself working on nights or weekends or sort of keeping uh, a nine to five? Okay, <laughs> sure, yeah, um, geez. So, uh, and, and, you know, like, uh, let me just say that I'm thinking like, you know, like, like kind of playing to the audience, you know, like there's a part of me, it's like, oh yeah. Uh, I was like, oh my God, you know, I work like, you know, a 10 hour week, work week, like, it's just like, <laughs> you know, and, and it's like, it's like heavenly, like, oh my God, like, why aren't you doing this? But no, no, the truth <laughs> is that the truth is I'm a total workaholic. Um, I'm probably working 70 hours a week and it's both out of a sincere joy and a sincere interest, but then also it's, there's some like neurotic 
neurotic something there that I need to work through. And then there's like some sort of overcompensation and weirdness there. So, but, but that, that's a bunch of, that's a bunch of context. And I put that out there for <laughs> folks who work in jobs where they don't actually enjoy what they're doing. Yeah. They don't find that match in the passion. Seeing someone like you who has this match between passion yeah. and what you're doing is really a wonderful oh, yeah. able to show that you can find something that you're so passionate about. Yeah. So. Yeah, but, but <laughs> let me just see if I can actually, you know, be um, a good conversation partner and answer your question because I've, you know, I've been like non-collaborative here. So hold up. Uh, how often do I work nights and weekends? Like a lot. Yeah, a lot, I'd say most of the time. And then a lot of times I'm like giving retreats on the weekend. But again, it's like, oh, my God, is it like hard to call that real work? Because it's like it's what I would actually like to be doing. And then the only kind of like, it's not the only downside to all the overworking, but like, you know, I have a fiance and like, I'm kind of like, can kind of like get into the neglecting her aspect. So that's the only downside. So that, yeah, anyway. Nice. Well, and you're actually already teeing up our next video, oh. which is sort of the upsides and downsides of what you do, what okay. works well and what doesn't. So I'll pause here in terms of just the, this has been about your day to day and we'll jump into that next video in a moment. Okay.